Okay, I'm going to immediately contradict myself. The title of this video is Helen's death in I Know What You Did Last Summer makes no sense. Her death makes sense based on the archetype that she represents. In the lore of horror movies, she has to die, especially given such a low body count in the movie. But based on what we see her do, she 100% should have survived. Plus, given some other details regarding the character, I want to try to explain why I believe Helen Shivers should not have been killed. Firstly, let's look at some external factors regarding the movie. Kevin Williamson of Scream fame wrote the script for I Know What You Did Last Summer based on the novel of the same name. The script was not picked up originally, but after the success of Scream and the reinvention of the horror genre with its release, it was almost a no-brainer for I Know What You Did Last Summer to be made. As it came out after Scream, comparisons were made and Scream obviously always came out on top. However, some of Kevin's ideas that were present in Scream were also shown here and there in I Know What You Did Last Summer, such as in the beach scene where the four main characters are talking about the urban legend, not the movie, but the urban legend about a guy with a hook and each of them shared the version of the story that they are familiar with. This can be viewed as the characters dissecting a popular horror story or a horror trope even, which gives it that bit of a meta side, which Scream is well known for. If we were to go a little further into this, we could even see it as the four protagonists writing out their own fates in the movie, giving it an even stronger horror movie in a horror movie vibe. They all also portray specific tropes. Barry is the unlikable jock, Helen is the vain dumb blonde, Ray is the hardworking underdog slash the biggest red herring, and Julie is our final girl. But it's not that simple. All of these characters are shown as having not at all desirable home lives. Barry is in constant need to get approval from his parents. Helen comes from a family where her father is neglectful and she has an abusive sister. Ray's parents we know very little about, but we can assume that they might be dead, and Julie's father passed away, so as a result of that, and the incident of thinking that she killed someone, the relationship between her and her mom deteriorated. Now why am I seeing all of this? Well, it's clear that the movie made these characters have as much depth as possible, and in fact, the other characters in the movie are pretty well written as well, like Missy, Max, Benjamin, and Elsa. This makes it even more mind-boggling that Helen would be killed off in such an insulting manner. So let's see, how does she get killed? On the 3rd of July, Elsa tells Helen that she needs her to be at the family store to help her with the inventory, setting up the timeline in the movie quite well. On the 4th of July, she wakes up in her bed and realizes that a fisherman cut her hair while she was sleeping. While at the parade, Helen notices the fisherman, and later is the only one to witness Barry getting killed. She is deemed as crazy, as they cannot find Barry's body or any trace of blood, so a cop takes her home. There is a roadblock and they are forced to take the alleyway, where the cop is tricked by the fisherman and killed. Now this is the beginning of Helen's end. Realizing what happened, Helen busts the window of the car and falls barelegged into the shards of glass. She starts running away from the fisherman, all while wearing heels and a dress, and she finds her way to her family store. Elsa is there doing inventory. She lets Helen in and is told to lock the back door, but it's already too late for Elsa, as the fisherman already came into the store. While walking around the store, the fisherman turns the lights and the radio off, but then somehow also teleports under one of the clear plastic sheets just in time to tackle Helen and jump scare us. Helen, however, runs away, sees her sister's dead body and gets away from the fisherman, but only for a hot second. She runs into a room that's seemingly a dead end, but she decides to jump off one of the windows. This proves to be a smart decision, as she survives. Somewhere on the way she took her heels off so as to run more efficiently, so that's not a smart decision on her part. She runs into an alley that leads into the parade, and seeing that there is nobody behind her, she starts walking towards her safety. We see that there is no other way into this alley with tires, other than the way that Helen came, and obviously from the parade. Helen, a couple of meters away from her safety, stops to look back, which gives the fisherman time to teleport yet again right in front of her. We know that there is no way he could have beat her to the alley, as he would have had to leave the store, in which case Helen would have 100% seen him either behind her or in front of her. It's also not plausible that he could have made it there via the parade, as 
for one, it would take him more time, and two, a dude with a hook and in a full black raincoat or whatever you call that thing would kind of stick out like a sore thumb amongst the marching band. So not once but twice do they make fishermen have... I don't know, Michael Myers-esque transporting abilities, and both of those times it's to hinder Helen. Thus, Helen gets killed, and that's the end of her story. Well, do you see what I mean by saying that her death is insulting? So you're telling me that she was able to escape the fisherman four times, each one of the four times being harder to do, not only physically, but also emotionally, due to you know, having seen her ex-boyfriend getting killed and nobody believing her, seeing her sister being dead, knowing that somebody is trying to kill her, I could go on. She kept making the choices all throughout the movie that kept her alive, subverting the dumb blonde trope, and then she gets killed like that? By the way, this is not even the first time Kevin Williamson did something similar. In Scream, Tatum puts up a hell of a fight against Ghostface. Maybe even more of a fight than Sydney up to that point. And when she can just escape by going out the door that's right behind her. Or, I don't know, when she can just kick the living shit out of whoever the killer is while he is down on the ground. She goes and tries to escape via the little opening in the garage door. Like, okay, I get it. When under these sort of circumstances, you don't always make the right decisions. Because you're being hit with with fear, or adrenaline, and the idea that you might die a painful death. But again, up to that point in both of the characters' fights, they made all the right choices. It just doesn't make sense to me. What I also find pretty confusing is the casting for the role. Sarah Michelle Gellar is a legend. I need people to start praising her for how good of an actress she is. I mean, okay, she didn't have much of a competition for that in I Know What You Did Last Summer, but we know that her roles in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Cruel Intentions, The Grudge, for fuck's sake, even the Scooby-Doo movies, where she showed that she could go full-on comedy on us, that she's a fantastic actress with a serious range. She auditioned for the role of Julie in this film, and Jennifer Love Hewitt auditioned for the role of Helen. So, you might think that the roles were swapped because, well, Sarah is a blonde, and we can't have a blonde be smart in the movie, that's just not how real world works, right? <sighs> Except, uh, Melissa Joan Hart was offered the lead role in this movie. Now, this is what she looked like back then. Ah, but she's blonde. How can this be? Okay, Maybe Melissa and Jennifer were more innocent looking back then, so they were right for the role. Except for the fact that in the same year Sarah got cast on Buffy, and if you haven't seen her delivering the line in the finale of season 1, where she says that she does not want to die because she's still a kid, please look it up. It's so vulnerable and innocent and just fantastic. So, again... Even if we look through the sexist lens of casting the blonde girl as the dumbass and the brunette girl as the innocent one that deserves to live, we see that it also makes no sense, as that did not seem to be the original plan from the producers. I also found her name really interesting. Helen, as in Helen of Troy, as in a woman because of whom a whole ass war was fought, as in the face that launched a thousand ships, which we can see literally as someone so beautiful that people sail towards her in ships or boats. And then, I know what you did last summer, our protagonists live in a fishing town, but we also could see it as Helen being the one that launched many stories. And if you think about it, if Helen Shivers did not want to be an actress in New York, she would not have applied for the 4th of July pageant and would not have won it. Thus, she and her friends would not have been celebrating her crowning and would not have hit Ben with their car. Basically, Helen, by some stretch of imagination, is the most important factor of this entire movie. In short, Helen Shivers' death in I Know What You Did Last Summer perpetuated stereotypes that the horror genre and in general arts, needed to break out from, oh, I don't know, like 70 fucking 5 million years ago, and at the same time showed inconsistent writing, the result of which was, of course, an illogical conclusion to a character story in the movie. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel for more. Leaving a comment regarding the subject would also help. Thank you for watching.